You said keep it random. Let's talk about hay fever. You see, I'm 44 years old and I've had hay fever for pretty much my entire life. When I was little, I used to go out, obviously, playing with me mates and stuff. And when I was seven or eight years old, I was out for like a whole day playing in like farmer's fields and building camps and just going round on my BMX and having fun and all that sort of thing. And I ended up spending quite a long time playing in a hay field. In fact, it was literally this field behind me here and I was streaming with hay fever. My eyes were going, my nose was going, my throat was sore. And at that time, we didn't know what it was. We didn't really think of uh, hay fever. It wasn't as well known as it is now. And the allergic reaction of the pollen from playing in that field was so bad that I ended up getting like a temperature as well as all the normal hay fever symptoms. It was just my body's way of reacting to extreme amounts of pollen at quite a young age when I had literally zero antihistamines in my system. So over the last 36 years or so, you'll have to trust me when I say I have tried every form of hay fever medication that is freely available in the UK. Free as in what the doctor can prescribe for you legally. And I know some countries have different approaches to this and uh, I did actually go on a clinical trial for uh, hay fever injections uh, about 20 years ago, was it? A long time ago anyway. The trial ended up getting pulled because I think someone died from like anaphylactic shock or something. Uh, but you were literally getting injected with different forms of like liquid pollen effectively to try and I'm sure this still happens in some countries. I don't know. Post in the comments below. So I'm going to tell you the medication that I've honed in on now as an adult that works really well for me. I'll tell you all about that later on in the video. And I'll give you some tips as well later on to try and help you if you do suffer from hay fever. Because it is, it's one of those things that it gets trivialised a lot. But for people who suffer from it in the summer, you will know that if you get a bad hay fever attack, it's not, a, it's not a trivial thing. It can just ruin your life for days on end or the entire summer for some people. Before I do, I've just got to, this is quite a special place for me. This is my old stomping ground. There used to be a seat in the corner here, but someone's made a new seat here, which is really awesome. So Newcastle's kind of over that way. And then we've got Wrighton in the middle here. And then over this side, which is more where I'm from, is Croke Rook. Uh, it's in Gateshead and just. It's like on the border between Gateshead and Northumberland. My dad had his auto electrical workshop over there and then he got a different workshop kind of over there-ish. And then if you keep going all the way down there you'll get to like Prudhoe and Wylam and over here, this housing estate, I literally grew up playing in the foundations of this Barrett's estate here. Remember, like, my mates would come around, you're coming to play in the Barrett's estate? It was before health and safety when, like, building sites were just completely open back then, and it was awesome. That's the youth centre, and the football pitches, and the rugby pitches. We used to go sledging down here. Uh, Newcastle Airport's kind of, let's see, but well, there's a plane taking off. It's, like, over there, so I live, like, way up that side, that neck of the woods now. I like to come to this corner where the old seat used to be. Because I'd take my dog for a walk and I'd come up here with my bike. I remember when the bypass was built at the top there. I used to play on the bypass when the tarmac was just getting put down and the road wasn't open yet and it was like having your own private road. It was awesome. I can feel the hay fever kicking in as I'm standing here. My eyes are already starting to water and that's with all my medications. You can imagine what this was like as an eight-year-old kid. But hay fever is one of those things where if you don't get it nailed and you don't work out what works for you, it can really cause a lot of problems in your life. So in this video, I just wanted to share what I've learned in the last 36 years of dealing with hay fever. Another aeroplane. And you know, if it works for you, then awesome. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to do a bit of your own digging. I know the medications can change depending on where you are in the world, but have a chat with your doctor 
and tell them that Andy Mack said that this works for him really well. When I was little, these trees, I don't know if those trees were even there. I can't remember, all this was more kind of open grassland around here. But I used to cycle all down these paths on my bike and it was great. Don't panic about the crazy amount of medication here. This is effectively just three different medicines. It's just different brands and all that sort of thing. Before I start, obviously I'm not a trained medical professional. I'm just telling you what works for me because I've been through the mill with this and I'm hopefully gonna give you some information that might help you if you have a chat with your doctor about this. You only ever take medication that's been prescribed by your doctor. There's all sorts of dangers of taking medications that haven't been properly prescribed. So do not ever take medications without going to see a doctor first. So before I tell you about the medicines that work for me, I'll just take you through some of the medication that didn't work for me over the years. And this is far from an exhaustive list, but back in the day, I used to take tofernadine, which was, I think, known as Trilliodan or Trilliodan, um, but it went under, I'm sure it went under other brand names as well, I can't remember. And then I also used to take Claritin, which was Loratadine, and that did nothing for me. I also used to take the Beconase nasal spray. I think that also got called like Becotide, and I think the active ingredient in that was Beclometazone Dipropion, Diprop anyway i also used to take pyriton that was chlorphenamine malleate and that just didn't help at all and i also went through a couple of years of trying zyrtec which was cetirizine and there was a bunch of other ones that i can't remember all i would say is if you are on any of those medications and they work for you then don't change it only look into changing stuff if it just isn't working for you and then go and have a chat with your doctor and maybe find out if any of the stuff I'm about to tell you about could be viable for you. But there's many reasons you might not want to take the medications that I'm taking. Let me just take a couple of these things out the boxes so you can see what they look like, uh, so you know what to ask your doctor for. Those are all the same. So for me, to control hay fever, it's a three-pronged attack. And that has been the only thing that works for me. If I miss out any one of these things, then my symptoms will be worse in that day. And the medication that I use are fexofenadine tablets, which go under a number of different names, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, fluticasone nasal spray, and sodium chromoglycate eye drops. So we've got a couple of different brands of this here. This is Alacrom eye drops, 2% sodium chromoglycate, the nasal sprays here, I think this is a slightly weaker version. So this is Fluctixazone Furoate, 27.5 uh, micrograms. This is, my son actually uses those ones. My one is Flixinase, which is Fluticasone Propionate. And this is uh, 50 micrograms per spray version of this. And a new one that I've just been prescribed, which is, again, where well, it's exactly the same. It's just in a different bottle. Fluticasone Propionate. 50 micrograms aqueous nasal spray. They're steroid nasal sprays. First thing in the morning, I just do a couple of squirts up each nostril and that's me set for the day. With the eye drops, it depends how bad my eyes are. Generally, I just do one drop in each eye in the morning and that's normally fine. But sometimes if I find my eyes are getting itchy towards the end of the day, then I'll do another drop in each eye and that normally helps. The fexofenadine tablets, these have been the best hay fever tablets that I've ever used. I used to get prescribed a uh, Telfast 120 and then it turned into this one by Chanel Medical, but it's still fexofenadine. These are the ones my son gets, which again, it's fexofenadine hydrochloride, 120 milligrams. Would appear to be the same as these, I don't know. That's Dr. Reddy's. Uh, and now I've been put back on Telfast 120 again. So Telfast is back on the scene. But as far as I'm aware, I think it's all the same stuff. This one's made by Zentiva. But as I say, for me, it's a three prong attack. One Telfast tablet every morning, 
couple of squirts of the nasal spray up each nostril in the morning and one drop in each eye of the sodium chromoglycate again first thing in the morning let me just narrow it down to the stuff i actually take because that looks a bit scary before i settled on this bunch of medicines my hay fever was just not under control in any which way shape or form i used to wake up in the middle of the night and if you have hay fever i'd love to hear if you used to do this but i used to get such an itchy throat that through the through the night i would end up scratching my throat with my tongue you'd end up kind of rubbing your tongue on the back of your throat to try and itch your throat and I'd wake up in the middle of the night with the taste of blood in my mouth because I'd been itching my throat so much from rubbing my tongue on on the top of my mouth um, that it had kind of worn the skin away and then obviously you've got the eye problem and all sorts of other things so I wanted to give you a few tips that will hopefully help you keep things under control because this isn't a hundred percent I would say this is about 90% of the battle but there's a few other things that you do need to think about to try and keep things under control first of all if you are having an attack of hay fever what can end up happening is your body goes into this kind of loop where the more your eyes run uh, or the more itchy your eyes get the more you want to rub them and when you rub them the water more and when they start watering it makes your nose run and then when your nose starts running then you start sneezing and then your throat can start going and it, you end up getting into this loop and sometimes you just need to calm the calm your body down uh, and just kind of try and sit somewhere preferably air conditioned like if you've got an air conditioned car or an air-conditioned office somewhere where there's no open windows or anything like that just to calm your system down I'm not saying go into work and tell people to shut the windows that's not fair just try and get into a room a meeting room or something and just calm your system down by getting away from the pollen the great thing about cars these days is that generally they're fitted with pollen filters so just sitting with the aircon running for 10 minutes in your car can sometimes be enough to just calm yourself down a little bit another thing that can help as well is to try and breathe through your mouth rather than through your nose when you're having an attack and your nose is getting all kind of agitated and obviously the blood vessels in your nose are getting very sensitive even if you're in a pollen free environment sometimes just the action of breathing in and out through your nose can be enough to start getting everything agitated again and then it develops back into that loop uh, that I was talking about before so just try when you're calming your system down just nice slow deep breaths in and out through your mouth rather than your nose I find that can help me another thing with your eyes uh, again I don't know if it's just me but if you rub the corner of your eyes as a hay fever sufferer that is like the on switch for hay fever you know if if you start rubbing the the inside corner i don't know what it does it seems to trigger some sort of instant release of histamines into your eyes and just everything starts to itch instantly so no matter how tempting it is to rub your eyes don't do it because again the more you rub your eyes the itchier they get it, the itch will never go away from rubbing your eyes you'll just keep rubbing them and rubbing them and rubbing them you'll have eyes out on stalks and it gets really really painful after a while you can end up damaging your eyes just don't be tempted to rub your eyes if you're in the shower you're washing your face and that and suddenly you you start rubbing your eyes and it's like oh that feels so good stop trust me on that one the more you do it it'll feel amazing at the time it won't feel amazing later when your eyes are really really red and sore one thing you can do to just calm your eyes down a bit is just get a nice cold damp flannel lie down or lie back on a chair and just drape it over your eyes and just lie there for five or ten minutes again just try and let your eyes calm down and just doing that the coolness of the cloth on your eyes can really help obviously make sure it's a nice clean flannel another thing that you need to remember as well is that pollen rises first thing in the morning and then it falls in the atmosphere in the early evening so hay fever tends to be worst around kind of morning-ish times maybe eight nine-ish in the morning and then 
five, six-ish in the evenings. For me, that's when the hay fever tends to be worst and apparently it's because of the pollen rising and falling in the atmosphere. I don't know how true that is, but I certainly find that that is when the hay fever is worst for me. So I would suggest around the times that you find that it's bad for you, because obviously it's going to vary depending where you are in the world, at those times I would suggest you keep your windows shut if you're at home. I would definitely advise keeping your windows shut first thing in the morning as well. Again, just give yourself a fighting chance that you're not going to get into that loop of your eyes and nose and everything starting to get sensitive and irritated from first thing in the morning because as I say once that loop starts one thing will trigger the other and then that'll trigger something else. If you get into a cycle of sneezing which sometimes happens where you and again the sneezing can feel really nice for the first couple of sneezes but after you've been sneezing for maybe an hour the novelty starts to wear off a bit and again if you get into that cycle of sneezing, try just to calm your system down and breathe in and out through your mouth rather than your nose. That normally helps me if I get into a kind of sneezing fit. Another quick tip for you, try and have a quick shower before going to bed at night because after a full day, especially if you work outside or anything like that, your body will be covered in pollen, especially if you've got hair, unlike me. If your hair is full of pollen, it just gets onto your pillow and then you're sleeping with all the pollen in the pillow just getting into your face throughout the night. If you have a really quick shower before going to bed, it means you're not then sleeping in a bed of pollen. Another just general kind of tip, and again, this is something you should probably check with your doctor, but try and get the antihistamines into your system a good, I would say a good month before the hay fever season starts for you. So if you normally start getting symptoms in May, then I would suggest you start taking your antihistamines from April, at least. And for some reason, I've started getting symptoms earlier and earlier. And then one last little tip. I don't know if it's snake oil, but honey apparently helps hay fever. Now, I like honey anyway, so I generally always have honey with my breakfast, either on yogurt or on toast or whatever. So I generally always have honey in the mornings anyway. So it's a very difficult thing to prove whether or not it works or if it's just psychosomatic. I have literally no idea, but apparently honey can help. And I like it anyway, so even if it doesn't help. I hope that's been useful. If you are a hay fever sufferer, you have my utmost sympathy, but I've got it pretty much under control now and hopefully these tips have been useful for you. If you have any other tips that you think would be useful for fellow hay fever sufferers, please pop it in the comments below. Give the video a quick thumbs up if you found it useful. As I say, don't ever change anything with your medication without speaking to your doctor first. See you next time. Bye.